I'm not gonna tell you about eating this, drinking raspberry leaf tea, castor oil. It might not be a good idea. My daughter was born even before her due date. I mean, come on, there have to be a line to cry it out, complain. Next day I had a baby. I want to have a C-section. You don't need an induction. If you don't have any other medical condition other than being a first time mom, you don't need an induction. If you're just 39 weeks pregnant, you don't need an induction. And I am here to offer you some encouragement, support, share my story and give you a few practical tips on how to avoid being induced as a healthy first-time mom. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for hospital births, I'm all for modern medicine, it saved my daughter's life. So what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes we need to double check on things we've been offered, make our own decisions, inductions are needed sometimes, but unfortunately they can trigger the domino effect of actions needed to be taken that can actually lead to c-section even more than just not in you at 39 weeks because when I was pregnant the first time that new study have just came out <laughs> lucky me about induction 39 weeks of first-time moms reducing chances of c-section which if you're looking to that study it reduces it mm, very slightly but what about chances of having a c-section when you're being induced what about the fact that baby might not be ready to come out not being fully cooked at 39 weeks because all these dates are very approximate actually the one who starts labor naturally is the baby when the baby is ready and when the mom's body is ready the main advice i can give you and this is the number one tip you need to repeat this mantra i am made to give birth i was totally sure that i am made to do this birth is not really a medical situation which like i said is really good to be checked on but there have to be a line baby's growing well your health you don't have any high pressure or any problems at all why you need to get induced so in my family all the women had natural births no one had a c-section back in the day in my country they would say if you have narrow hips maybe it will be harder for you to give birth which is not true in most of the cases the baby will be made for your hips you know because the nature wants us to be able to birth this baby if you haven't done so yet i certainly recommend you take some natural birth courses where you can just dive in more into all the nature birth all the things you're capable of just subscribe to all the accounts about birth so that you can see it on your feed all this encouragement all the time this helps more than you think it could. The fact that my doctor was so into this and scaring me, of course, I, I would have a little bit of a doubt. And so the way I worked with this fear of having a C-section, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you have too, I might be wrong, again let me know in the comments below i tried this technique from psychology you write a sentence i'm scared to have a c-section and then you change your word scared to i want to i know it sounds weird but it kind of worked for me and just the fact of me writing down the process of it like i want to have a c-section it like changes your perspective a lot already and then you start asking questions why i want to have a c-section and you find the reason why would you like to have a c-section be honest you can write something like i want to have a c-section because i'm afraid of pain in the natural labor because that could be a reason too right you can have even deeper practice you can ask these questions again what's gonna happen if you have pain or your reason might be i want to have a c-section because i want uh, my family to take care of me more you need to dig into yourself if you have a therapist you have a psychologist you work with certainly bring it up they will help you with techniques you can do to to work with your mind and put that pressure away and that's just the biggest thing in this case and then uh, a few more practical tips which will help you to get in this right mindset and just take your mind off of thinking when am i gonna have this baby isn't it time already make a list 
all the things you won't be able to do when you have a baby go to the movies go to a restaurant where you can't really bring kids to do other stuff with your partner like go to the gym together go to see like a theater performance just get out of the house get yourself busy definitely take your mind off of this just be confident that it's gonna happen when it's gonna happen just stay healthy exercise through the pregnancy but also in the end even though it's kind of hard but at least walk I think um, walking really helped me. I've been walking a lot. And in the end, like in the week 38, I've been feeling how walking was, you know, opening my pelvis and certainly, certainly movement just as simple as walking, which actually probably one of the best things you can do in pregnancy, is extremely helpful. Definitely listen to your body, right? Cause we're all different and energy levels are definitely down. But walking and moderate exercise, if you're still up for it, is a great way to induce labor. It will also bring you that hormone of happiness and also hormone of labor, oxytocin. Stress kills it. And if you're stressed and working yourself up about needing an induction or not needing an induction and all these things and when I'm gonna have that baby you're accumulating that stress that does not help to release the oxytocin hormone to have that baby and of course your body wants to feel safe your body wants to feel calm to have a tiny little human delivered you need to feel in peace you need to feel lots of love and hopefully your family can give it to you but it's also up to you how you take it how what's your perspective on everything is work with your mind maybe get yourself a therapist if you don't have one because also just a friendly reminder is that even prenatal depression is real and certainly if you think that you have any signs of that, talk to your doctor about it. Watch positive birth stories here on YouTube. I'll link mine down below. Talk to your friends who had positive birth experience, especially if you have any who had a spontaneous labor and beautiful outcomes. Babies love to be a surprise. They always start the labor when you're not thinking about it. Certainly happened to me twice. I heard this always when you take that pressure down, don't think about it, just enjoy life. That's when labor starts. If you are feeling very worked up about this, if you are feeling very stressed, besides getting a therapist or just talking to someone about it, it is a good idea and worked for me to cry it out. By yourself or with your spouse, with your mom, with your close friend, complain. Like if you were holding it inside the whole time or throwing it a little bit here and there to your family, just let it go all at once. Let all of these emotions come out, break down, that's when you will release it. That's when you will most probably let it go. And after that, next day I had a baby. And I heard about that even before. More often than not, when women have that emotional breakdown in the last weeks of pregnancy, that's when the labor starts. Because it also releases all the pressure, also releases all that thoughts and all of those emotions. It was very helpful and very freeing. So have a good crying session. Next tool that is proven to work is having sex. That doctor who was pressuring me into induction in the last visit with no hope in her eyes suggested us to have intercourse and she clearly did not believe that it's gonna work. And to her surprise, just a few days later after that visit, I came to her office with seven centimeters dilation, not even at 40 weeks pregnant yet. It's a very good method to induce in labor. There is even some data proving that the semen can soften the cervix and also just the motion helps your mucus plug out. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, you know, just do it as a medicine if you don't feel like it. That's what happened to me and it totally worked. Next morning I woke up with contractions, which I didn't know they were contractions because they were all in my back. So watch out for that. You can have a back labor full on like the whole time. Your stomach might not even tighten even once. So I had that lower back pain from the morning 
uh, and I did lose a part of my mucus plug and for the longest time I couldn't believe I'm in labor so certainly watch out for those increasing contractions and when they're getting close together becoming more intense you, you should go to the hospitals. Go see a chiropractor. They are able to stimulate your body in a way that it can relax more and release like the right hormones. And also uh, you might be having some troubles with the blood circulation, which is also important in labor and for starting labor. But if you notice in this video, I don't tell you to drink any raspberry leaf tea, don't use a castor oil. It might not be a good idea to push your body into labor but even with this natural ways. The baby might not be ready yet. It's still a very strong natural medicine. Also, for that same reason, I declined all the cervical checks because it doesn't mean anything. Why would you check and risk a preterm labor because they start checking you at like 36 weeks. Just why are you getting your hands inside a healthy woman with a healthy pregnancy when this information won't give you much? Like with my second child, I went for cervical checks because it was a little different circumstances, but even though when I was four centimeters dilated, I was not in active labor and no one would ever tell me when is it the time to go to the hospital or when is that active labor is gonna start. So how many centimeters you're dilated, how effaced you are, will not tell you or your doctor how close is labor. And of course, I declined the membrane swap. You could potentially use it as a labor induction tool, but I wouldn't recommend that again because of the fact that the baby will be ready on its own time and triggering labor too early can cause lots of complications. You're gonna deliver that baby on your own the best way possible, the way it's meant to be. You're both gonna be healthy, you're a healthy mama and everything's gonna be just great. So fight for your rights, know what's best for you because you are the parent in the end of the day and you are feeling if the baby is ready or what's going on just keep checking on yourself and the baby and give this video a like if this was helpful subscribe to my channel and i will see you in this one